Perry for five minutes. I thank the chairman. Thank you, secretary. In an attempt to get to net zero by 2050, do you support the administration's goal of cutting U.S. emissions in half by 2030? Uh, yes, I do. Secretary, in 1997, the Senate voted 95 to zero, including you and then Senator Biden, in favor of the Bird hagel resolution, which resolved that the U.S. shouldn't cut emissions until China, Mexico, India, Brazil, South Korea, and other deve so-called developing nations cut emissions as well. Do you remember that? I do very, very well because I was managing it and on since, the floor of the Senate. Since uh, 97, have emissions from China, India, and Mexico all increased? Yes, as yeah. they have yeah. from the United States. And, and global and emissions have continued to increase as well, right? Yes. Have any of those countries submitted a credible plan to get to net zero emissions by 2050? Which countries? Let's just go with uh, China, India, or Mexico. No. It seems that, have you abandoned your position that those other nations would cut emissions before Americans would have to make choices between the groceries on their table and paying for, for these policies? I think the reality is that the world changed in that period of time. Let me, let me explain okay, to so, you. Okay, no, so you me, voted that way, but, but you let me explain your... to you the vote, because I did manage this on the floor. And I know exactly what happened, because I'm the one who said to our colleagues, I think everybody ought to vote for this. And the reason was that it fundamentally had the message that it's not fair. The one we were talking about earlier with the chairman, it's not fair for us to be reducing and China, which was producing three times more emissions than us, and then producing goods that come into our country from that dirty power, and we have a problem. So we wanted to address that. But we knew not every aspect of that piece of legislation is what you, you all call, we all call, a message. It was a message vote. And the vote was clear. We wanted other people to join us in the effort to reduce emissions. Okay, fair enough. That hasn't happened sufficiently. It hasn't happened sufficiently. No. sufficiently. Now, Secretary, in 2015 at the Paris Climate Conference, you said that if all industrial nations go to zero emissions, it wouldn't be enough. And then at the White House's Climate Day in January of 21, you said almost 90% of the planet's emissions come from outside the U.S. We could go to zero tomorrow, and the problem isn't, isn't solved. And in April... 21, you told the Washington Post that even the U.S. and China going to zero emissions tomorrow won't solve the climate's problem. Then in April of 21, you said that global net zero is not enough and that CO2 must be removed from the atmosphere. How much is the correct amount of CO2? Let me explain to you, if I can, so you understand exactly what I said. It, it, it's close, but it's not quite exactly what I was saying. Can you what just I'm tell saying, me what let, the let me tell you what I'm saying. Is. I'm going to tell you what the correct. Here's how, how it works. Because we have put, I would forget the exact number of tons, millions of tons of CO2 and other greenhouse gases are now in the atmosphere. They're there. And every day we're adding more. And so every day the heat is going up and we have to figure out how we're going to, you know, tame the, the monster here. The only way to do that is to reduce emissions on an ongoing basis to get control on the current level of emissions that we have created. But then, what is then but, but what actually is the correct, suck? Sir, with all due respect, to, you've been through this before. Finish. What is the correct amount? I don't want to spend a bunch of time about a history lesson about things that people don't care about. What changes every what, day? I, don't, the, I can't tell you exactly correct what it is. Amount it's in the, yes, so, it does. So, Secretary, you probably know that for approximately 200 million years. What's the, what's the parts per million now? About 400, right? Can we it's agree over on that? over 400. All right. It's about, about 200 million years. 2,000 parts per million. Did Mother Nature get it wrong for 200 million years? Here's the difference, Congressman. The difference is, yes, there were, ma there were periods which all scientists, all the scientists who deal with climate acknowledge that there have been moments on the planet which is billions of years old in which there were greater heat and there was greater tell me the difference dioxide. quickly i've got a the little difference bit of is time. human beings are creating okay so this. that's the difference so human beings are we about are creating hundred thousand years old but but during these periods of time where it was two thousand parts per million life existed as a matter of fact not we were in not the, one people of the lowest not, periods. not human beings walking around we're in no. one of the lowest periods of carbon in the atmosphere 
and not only recorded history, in the history of life existing on the planet. In December of 2022, you told the Washington Post we need to remove 1.6 trillion tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere via direct air capture. The cost for that is about $1,000 per ton or one6 quadrillion dollars. Now, I said, you said you didn't know, but since 2015, since the last El Nino, about 500 billion tons have been, have been emitted into the atmosphere. During that same period of time, 2015, if you look at the temperature graph, this is from NOAA. The temperature has gone down. Show the next slide. This is from NASA satellite data. Temperature has gone down. You want to have the, uh, have, uh, the American taxpayers, my constituents that are having a hard time afford their groceries, pay for a car, buy a new home, spend $1.6 quadrillion to fix a problem that A, doesn't exist, and as a matter of fact, you might be exacerbating because it's unknown. It is unknown at this time the low level that, of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that might actually destroy life because plant life <laughs> all depends. As you know, Secretary, plant life all depends on CO2. And when we kill it, then we're done, too. I yield the balance. Congressman, let me just say that uh, I don't agree with what you're saying out there for any number of reasons. I don't have time to go into all of them now, but I'll just tell you point blank that the difference between the periods you're looking at in terms of heat, et cetera, and human, human input is night and day, number one. Number two. Why do you think 195 countries in the world, their prime ministers, their presidents... Because they're grifting they're, like you are, sir. <laughs> this, uh, that's a pretty shocking statement, that you believe that all the scientists in the world are grifters, honestly. Not all scientists agree with you, Mr. Sutter. 98% of all the scientists in the world... Science isn't yeah. about agreement. It's not about consensus. You know that. Chair well, now recognizes Ms. Sherfulis McCormick.